We heard from the Dungeons and Dragons duo, D and D, Dave and Dan. The alignment. We heard from Dave Canales and Dan Morgan at the NFL meetings over the last two days. We wanted to bring that audio to you. We'll start with Dave Canales because yesterday I set the bar. Before we heard Dave Canales talk, I said, I want to be on record with what I want to hear from Dave Canales so I can't move the goalposts on him when he talks. So I can't say, like, oh, I just want to hear whatever and then go, I didn't hear this, that, or that. I didn't want to move the, 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 the goalposts. So I said, he better have a plan for Bryce Young. That was my number one tangible thing he could say. He better have a plan for Bryce Young. Luckily, it does sound like they have a plan for Bryce Young. Here's Dave Canales on fixing Bryce's footwork. So it's it's no different than the approach that we took with Russell, with Geno, with Baker, is we are going to become the concepts where Bryce looks most confident. And how do you tell that? Look at the firmness of the back foot on the delivery, whether it's a plant throw or one hitch. Mm. There's just this really solid look and an aggression just exploding off that back foot. You see it all across the league. You see those anticipatory throws. Well, these are concepts that these guys love. We'll start to hone in on some of those, but we're going to have to throw a lot at them to kind of discover those. But you talked about the footwork part, right? That's every year, every quarterback. We go right back to the basics. We start with the stance under center. We balance the feet, get your left foot into the instep of the right. Okay, my chest is up, my eyes are up so I can see every part of the field. We take it from that basic starting point regardless of how many years the quarterback's been in there, but we just take that. Then we start to build the drop. Then we build the footwork, and then specifically what you're saying, we look at the concept and we say, how can we make this footwork intelligent to this concept? Because if you watch, most quarterback footwork, they take about three steps from the gun. Little bit of football nerd. Little bit of this is our plan for Bryce Young. Little bit of you know who I am. And when I say that, I mean, he. it took him about two seconds to go Russell, Geno, Baker, which also sounds like I develop quarterbacks. Here is my resume. Stand on business. That's Dave Canales saying, watch me work. How am I going to fix Bryce Young? Hmm. You see what I do. Secondly, uh, it wasn't just about fixing his footwork. It was about learning from his footwork, which I appreciate. It is watching his footwork because happy feet is something that like color commentators throw out a lot. Oh, you got a little happy feet. But really what, what, what it is, it, it's not confident feet, right? It, think of it like, um, I don't know, I, I was, you know, the rough and tumble world of of communication major in in college, right? A lot of people like to make fun of the old comm majors, uh, but I we took an entire class on nonverbal communication, and one of the thing, one of the the subjects or the the curriculum was trying to spot liars, right? It was it was nonverbal communication, and what was the number one, right? Like fidgety. It was it was moving a lot. It was your eyes are are darting all over the place. It means you're not confident, right? It means it means you're you're not aware of what's going on. You're trying to make things up as you go. So what he's saying is the plays that we watch his feet and his feet are confident. One, two, three, plant throw. Okay, that's a play that he likes, right? He might not even consciously realize he likes it, but his body is telling us he he knows that play. Let's call that one more. More importantly, let's find what it is about that play, the concepts, the routes, the receiver he's throwing to that allows his body to trust it, and let's do more of that. Again, a little bit of quarterback nerd there, a little bit of watch me work, a little bit of a plan for Bryce Young. Dan Morgan looks at it from a different level, right? Because he's a GM. He's looking at it from roster uh, development. He's looking at it from who can we surround Bryce Young with. Here's Dan Morgan on how to get Bryce Young to the next level. We want Bryce Young to be the best version of him, of himself, uh, not try to be anybody else or live up to my expectations or anybody else's expectations because the Bryce Young that I scouted in college and saw glimpses of last year, I know the type of player he is, but he's not going to do it all by himself. You know, it, it takes all 11 guys and more to – 
you know, execute this offense um, and execute it at a high level. Like I, like I know that he can. So um, it's a team effort. You know, all three phases, they all got to play together. It's not just going to be on Bryce. Um, everybody's got to play together. And that's what team, team football is about. And that's what we're going to be about. Here's what I think that means, because there is a hint of difference, right? When when he says, I want him to be the best version of himself, I want him to do what he does best, to me, from a GM's chair rather than a coach's chair, that means we don't want him to have to cover for anybody, right? We want him to do what he does best. We don't want him to have to, like, if what he does best is get through progressions, right? One to five, right? First receiver, second receiver, third receiver, get all the way through. We don't want him to feel like he has to get rid of the ball too quick because the offensive line can't protect, right? We don't want him to feel like he has to uh, compensate for receivers not being able to get open. We want him to do what he does best, and that means having the roster around him that allows him to do that without being forced into anything else. Another thing I thought that was interesting from Dan Morgan from the GM's chair uh, is he talked long-term how he wants to build the the Panthers roster, and, and that was through the draft. We are going to build this thing through the draft, um, draft and develop our own talent, and hopefully they pan out. We can extend them and we can keep our own. Um, but that's the plan as of now. And then, obviously, you know, supplementing in free agency. I think that's going to be, you know, obviously one of the things that that we're going to do as well. But yeah, we're going to build this thing the right way, which I feel is through through the draft. Do you know what's interesting about that? Through the draft, to me, means you think you have job security. We see it every year, right? Somebody who's on a hot seat, where do they go spend all the money in free agency. They trade away a whole bunch of draft picks for players that can help them right now. You, you may have seen this from Scott Fitterer not too long ago, where you feel like, I got I to gotta do something. I, I, we need to be so much better right now. If you're planning through the draft, I think that means you believe you're going to be around in three, four, five years. It's, it's, you know, that moment in a relationship where the other person says like, Hey, do you want to go on a vacation next summer? And you're like, it's not even winter yet. You know, <laughs> I guess you think we're going to be together for a while. Right. It's like, you know, did you, next, next summer, are you still like, what are you talking about? Like when he starts saying we're going to build through the draft and we have to hit on more than we don't, what, what, what he's saying is. We're going to put things in place now that we might not see the the benefit of for two or three years. Some rookies take a minute. Right? If you feel like you got to win right now, it'd be, well, we're, we like draft picks, but also if the right deal is out there, we'll, we'll send away all our picks for the, the win now microwavable pizza version of, of a team. Just ask the Rams what they think about all them picks. Just ask the Rams. <laughs> Although I, they tried to give them away. That the Panthers didn't want him. Well, there's that for for Brian Burns. Uh, they tried to give away a whole bunch of them. Um, I just I just look at it when Dan Morgan says he wants to build through the draft. I think that's what most people want to hear from their team. Build from the draft. Build through the draft. Yes, that's that's the way to do it from the foundation up. Build the right way. And and most decisions in the NFL are made with job security in mind. So it's like, yeah, I'd love to build through the draft too. Unfortunately, I don't want to make a whole bunch of draft picks that if they turn out well, the next guy gets the credit for. So I'm trading them for an all pro right now. Like th that's the thought process that so many GMs have. So if Dan Morgan is being honest with us there and we have no reason to believe he's not, he's not just saying I want to build through the draft. He's saying I have the time to build through the draft. Maybe that means David Tepper isn't his, in his ear going, you better win the division right now. You better fill seats in that stadium. Beyonce fills them. You have to fill them too. I don't know. I don't know if that's how Tepper talks, but that's in my mind how Tepper talks.